All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. The Boston Celtics in their last 25 games are 22 and three. 22 and three, and they have taken down 14 teams that are looking like they're gonna make the playoffs. So Boston, they're winning close games. I mean, they're blowing teams out. They're doing literally everything. Mostly they're doing the blowing out, um, but they're beating good teams, they're beating bad teams. Like they are beating any type of team. And with yesterday's win against the Denver Nuggets, who are a really talented basketball team, they are now rolling. Nice little win streak going for Boston. And they are tied currently as the number four seed right behind the Philadelphia 76ers. So Boston, I mean, this is a team that was literally below 500 after their, their first 30 or so games of the season. And people were saying, myself included, were saying like, how long can we expect Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum? Like, how long can we expect to see that duo on the court together? Are they gonna try and bring in a third star? Are they gonna trade one of those two players away? Like, what's gonna happen to Boston at the end of this season? And all of a sudden, they get healthy, the defense starts performing at an elite level, which was anticipated, and just like that, Boston, I mean, you're the four seed. You, have, you are literally currently at the point of this recording, and the only team behind them right now is kind of Cleveland, Toronto, and then at the five seed, you have um, the Chicago Bulls, who are, like, suffering right now. Like, the Chicago Bulls are literally just suffering. They are getting healthy though, so Boston's got to keep an eye on that, but welcome back to the channel, man. If you guys are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you want more Celtics content, drop a comment down below, but this is a really fun team. I mean, their defense is phenomenal. Their offense is pretty awesome as well. You have Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Any team that either one of those players would be on, to be honest with you, would be a very fun exciting game to watch and they have both of them so boston i give a lot of credit to their defense for just picking it up i mean i think they have the best defense in the last three months or so since draymond went down for the warriors and you know boston like they are a no-nonsense team they have a perfect starting lineup robert williams is probably he might actually be the most underrated player in the entire NBA. I mean, that not just because I'm making a Celtics video and I'm trying to get you guys to hit the like button and drop a sub for more content, but I think genuinely Robert Williams, I, I think if he isn't the most underrated, he's definitely top three, and I think he's undisputed top five. I mean, Robert so far this season, he'll give you some blocks, but he's also averaging a double-double. I mean, the guy's averaging 10 and 10 on the season. There are very few players who can do that. And the best part about Robert Williams, he's 24 years old. He's 24 years old. So, yeah, Boston has some veterans. You know, you've got the Al Horfords, you got the Daniel Tices, but they need them. You know, every team needs your veterans. My favorite part about Boston is they're so young right now. But they're not too young where it's like it's a bunch of 20-year-olds running around like, the, like my Rockets trying to figure things out and losing a bunch of bad games. It's these guys are young about to, not really necessarily in their prime yet about to enter their prime and they've been playing with they've been playing with each other for a while well not everybody on the roster but like i mean daniel tice what a huge acquisition they had robert williams dealing with some foul trouble last night i think horford was dealing with some foul trouble as well you're playing nikola Jokic, mvp last year he's looking to win a back-to-back -back mvp trophy this season and last night you have I mean, basically just a lot of foul trouble and you have guys like Daniel Tice step up and they're just huge for you. I mean, Daniel Tice, that's, that was like, when he got signed by the Rockets, I was like, what is that move? Like, that's not the team he should be on. He should be on a playoff contending team coming off of the bench, getting about 20 minutes a night. And when his name gets called, he will step up. And that's exactly what happened against Nikola Jokic. Shout out Grant Williams as well. I saw something where he wants to be called Batman because the Batman, you know, takes down the Joker or whatever. I don't know if that was real or not, but, like, I love it either way. So, Boston right now, I mean, they're running essentially, now they're running, like, a nine-man rotation. You have a really talented bench. Like I said, Daniel Tice, you got Peyton Pritchard, who is, Peyton Pritchard is so needed on this roster. Like, they are hungry for playmakers, hungry for playmakers. Hence the Derek White trade, who is another great piece on their bench. And then you have Grant Williams to fill out the, the nine-man rotation. But looking at it, like Peyton Pritchard last night, for example, I mean, he just is giving you a little taste. And I believe he's 24 years as well. So he's another guy who fits under the category of 
not too young where it's like you have a, a lot of flaws you're but you're not old enough to where you're you have like especially injury concerns thankfully boston got healthy like a couple months into the season so right now fully healthy you're wheeling and deal you're wheeling and dealing but peyton brings a huge huge impact off of the bench along with Derek white who's another solid playmaker for him my favorite part about Derek white is his defense and that just kind of goes into the whole overall picture of the boston celtics is they have such a great team defense and it's being set up, you have Marcus Smart, who's going to guard whatever team's best guard they have. And, you know, Marcus Smart, I would I would say Marcus Smart's like, like Pat Bev, I love Pat Beverly. And if you're a Timberwolves fan, I'm sorry, because I love Pat Beverly. But like, I feel like Pat Beverly is almost what he wishes, or Marcus Smart is almost who Pat Beverly wishes he was, because Marcus can do it on offense. Marcus can play make, he can get rebounds, he can get you assists, he can get to the bucket, he can make threes at a consistent level, at a consistent and efficient level. But defensively is where you really see Marcus Smart's impact on the court. I remember watching this guy in college and thinking, like, he was just so cool. At Oklahoma State, like, Marcus Smart, when I remember watching him in college, like, he was just such a cool guy. And you just kind of knew whatever team was going to draft this guy, like, they're set for him. Like, he's going to fit perfectly whatever team he gets to. Like, that's just how he is. He's such a hustler. He's such a dog. He's got that great mentality, that dog mentality. Got a chip on his shoulder. And he gets the offense going. So you have him in the backcourt. And then in the front court you got Robert Williams. And you fill it around with just extremely versatile, extremely skilled and talented obviously offensive players but defensively as well i mean al horford's got plenty of gas left in the tank jason tatum jalen brown two really solid defenders and obviously they have unbelievable offensive skill but their lineup is just guys who can do so many different things at a good level at a high level and when it's combined like it has been in their last 25 games when you're 22 and 3 and everything's just hitting everything's working it's making sense it's flowing consistently you don't want to play these teams you know like it's right now boston you can look at boston you can be like oh, jalen brown jalen brown jason tatum like Duh. yeah jalen brown jason tatum like those guys aren't gonna win anything you could say that as, as often as you want. Like You can be thinking right now, the Boston Celtics aren't winning the championship. But I'll tell you this, even if you don't think they're winning the championship, is this is a team you are trying to play. You're trying to play a team that is 22-3 and three in their last 25 games who has beaten 14 playoff teams in that span. And most of them are by a like, huge margin. Like Most of them have been blowout leads. My money's on you don't want to play that team especially Boston's looking like they're about to get the four seed, possibly even the three seed, and get home field advantage. So, Boston, you don't want to play Boston, man. You don't want to play Boston. You can have the opinion you don't think that they're going to win it all, but, like, still, you don't want to play Boston because they could win it all. That's it for today. If you guys enjoyed it, hit the like button. Hit that subscribe button for daily NBA content. Drop some comments down below if you want more Celtics videos, and uh, I'll see you guys later.